Hello and welcome to episode 20 of the podcast. We are live from Detroit. I'm Jen. <coughs> and I am Earl. And I set him up because I gave him the vape pen about a second ago. I apologize. <laughs> so today we are here to talk about how to make bubble hash. As you can tell, we are in the lab, which is a lot of fun. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get right into it, but um, I have the wrong thing up. It's okay. <laughs> but we are here to, uh, every week. We take different cannabis cannabis topics, um, and we here to learn um, and educate ourselves so we can have a well balanced understanding about cannabis and cannabis products. Exactly, so we uh, take a new topic every week. Uh, we talk about a little bit of history, business, yes. science. Some advocacy, we get into some do-it-yourself stuff, which is today. today. Um, did you say history? I think you said history. I said a little history. History is a big thing about it, and we get, I mean, it's naturally, this is a political movement. Exactly. Um, so we get into a pinch of politics. We get a little bit more of a pinch than we want to be pinching, <laughs> um, but it is, it is what it is. It is. <laughs> And like Jen said earlier, uh, we do have a lot to get into, uh, but please follow us, yep. like us. Share us. Subscribe to us. Subscribe to us. On Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we are G3 Cannabis Therapy uh, Network, uh, dot org. Um, same name for the Facebook and Instagram. Yep. And also Wunny. Wunny. Exactly. Just one word, Wunny. Wunny. G3 Cannabis Therapy Network. Wunny. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But yours is easier to spell, I think. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Let's go into the Nug News that is brought to us by Tiggity App. Tiggity App, which is going to be the first therapeutic journal app where you can actually journal how cannabis and cannabis products yep. affect you. Exactly. Um, by tracking that information, you can better make uh, you can make better recommendations and also better selections next time you go into a dispensary or if it's homeboy from the, from the fifth floor. Um, you can say, hey, man, that one stuff you got me, maybe a little sleepy, you have something that's more uplifting. Exactly. As long as you can journal it. So that's the tiggityapp.com. Tiggityapp.com. And it should be dropping on 420. Yes, yes. And you can get the inside scoop if you go there to the website. Yep, right now. Um, and actually put in your email address. You'll be one of the first people to actually get to try out the app. Exactly. So that'd be cool. It'll look cool. Cool. Uh, I got a cool story, um, and Christina's going to post these into the comments for us because she's awesome. Yeah. But it's you, you should really read this. It's from Forbes. It's the nine women shaping the cannabis industry. Oh, yeah? So it talks about nine women who are really involved in the cannabis industry, and I just thought it was really cool because it is kind of like a more male-dominated. Yeah. Uh, I think the article explains that only like 36% of the people in the industry are actually female. Wow. So it's talking about nine of them. Wow, that's what's up. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean women had a very huge impact on even getting the movement going. Right. Um, and then to see that the industry is now becoming more mature and to see that women or blacks or brown, mm -hmm. poor people, no one should be excluded. Exactly. So that's what's up. That's a good article. From Forbes? Uh, from Forbes, yep. Yeah, Forbes magazine. I know. Well, you know me, I have about 30 articles. We're about to uh, I'm very through. proud though. I'm very proud. Yeah. He has a lot less than normal. My goal is to spend like 30 seconds on an article. Some of them, I may get some, see, I'm already wasting 30 seconds by talking right now. All right, so I'm gonna get right to it. Um, in Michigan, I'm starting Michigan first. Uh, groups with more pot arrests may get edge in Michigan legalization industry. Okay. Which means, so the state of Michigan um, is actually having work groups for people to actually come and give their input on how they believe the new legal market, the adult use market, should actually look. Okay. So we have a chance to actually raise our voice to, say that, well, it shouldn't look just like a white market or a white male market. Mm -hmm. It should be very diverse. Exactly. Just as the plant is diverse. There should be women, there should be uh, men, there should be black, brown, pink, purple. Everybody should be included. Right. And there should be no barriers that excludes people. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um, that but we'll cool. see. Um, no, no state program is actually has a successful social equity program yet, right? Uh, which I believe the solution is gonna be more towards the people, not necessarily looking for legislation. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is important uh, to see where we can actually have a seat at the table. So that was 30 seconds. Um, Michigan launches hemp pilot program in time for 2019 growing season. This is breaking news. That is, because uh, we weren't sure. We talked about this before. Yes, yes. So we were wondering if we are gonna be able to plant hemp this year mm -hmm. to be able to supply the industry for next year in Michigan. Right. Um, so they're going to have temporary licenses. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, there's going to be actually read the article on in life. There's going to be some um, training work group group classes okay. in Lansing where they actually explain the application process. Oh, that's nice. Uh, which they, if you do apply for a hemp license, whether you're growing, processing, or handling hemp, it's only going to be like uh, 200 bucks. 
Oh, that's like way better than. For the, yeah, yeah, way better than like hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but the actual license itself, I believe, is gonna be like fourteen hundred, like thirteen. Yeah, okay. but still, that's but affordable. Still, yeah. But your application, I believe, is only like hundred to two hundred bucks. That's nice. So that's cool. Uh, so check out that article for more information. Um, the Congressional Democrats hold first ever marijuana reform panel at the policy retreat. So pretty much, um, at this retreat, I want to. This is important because they're discussing how to implement legalization, mm -hmm. not if there's going to be That's legalization. Cool. So the, I like that language. The language is now shift to where it's, it's, it's pretty much inevitable mm -hmm. that, that marijuana is going to be legalized. Well, and we all kind of like felt it though. Yeah. So it's like now the Democrats, Republicans in the House and the Senate, that it's now getting to them. That's nice. And now they're trying to, to discuss strategies on how to best implement it. Hopefully they come up with no shady strategies, okay? And we're done. We don't need no shady shit. Yeah, she, yeah. see, she's saying it. See, I was cutting. I was washing myself. <laughs> Tamara told me to wash my mouth up with soap last time. I said the word so much. I don't know. Um, I was in the zone. Sorry. All right, next one. State financial regulators press Congress to allow marijuana banking access. We're following this right now. Um, I just got two cents here. It's kind of disturbs me a little bit that the first legislative bill that may actually get to the president's desk has to do with banking. Of course it does. But I mean, I get, you know, but it's like, how about the lives that have been disproportionately right, right, affected? Yeah. Well, because like, how about want to make sure they can make money. Yeah. That's so, all it's about. So it's, uh, I mean, okay, it's moving forward. You know, people don't want to just deal with cash and dispensaries and all that jazz. But that's like, you know, that's a side dish. The first dish is actually, that's reconstruct the lives that have been fucked up for the mm -hmm. past couple of years by this lie on the war on drugs. Exactly. So I just went from saying shit to the word fuck and just, <laughs> just went, I just, I was trying to be it's conscious. Okay. okay, okay, all right. Bring um, bar. Um, Fox could start uh, pot expungements in a month. Uh, so pretty much this is attorney uh, general in Chicago. Okay. Okay, this is your hometown, Illinois. Illinois. Um, so pretty much the county that Chicago <laughs> is in, they're trying to work with a Cook company county. called Cook County, was it? Uh, Cook County. Cook County, there you go. I was gonna, I was gonna say Cook County. I grew County. up in Cook County. Did you? Yep. That's what's up. Uh, so Cook County, uh, they're trying to, ha working with Code of America, okay. which they, they can do algorithms to figure out um, who is eligible to get expunged. Oh, that's cool. And it's gonna automatically happen. That's good, that's what we need. Yeah, and there's no like, you gotta go You don't have to apply, online. you don't yeah, have to do anything. It's stuff. just yeah. like, nope, you're good, let's look at, go. Look at, look at Chicago, look at Cook County coming in. And every state should follow some Every state like should. That. And all the other counties should. Yes. But Cook County is very large in Illinois. It, it encompasses Chicago and a lot of the suburbs. So that's nice to that's see. That's what's up, that's what's up. Um, Alabama police ruined a couple's lives over $50 of weed. Now the charges against them have been dropped. What? So pretty much, I like to uh, give some of these articles here and there just because we need to understand what this movement is truly about, okay? This is the silliness that's happening, yeah. you know, in people's lives. I mean, okay, it's 50 bucks, they get raided at their house. They find, it was 50 bucks in weed. They found one sleeping pill um, that was actually assigned to that person. It was just outside the bottle. And they, but because of asset forfeiture laws, they seize their car, seize their assets, um, and they're now living in a shed. Oh my gosh. They're living in a shed and the now, charges have been and the dropped. charges have been dropped. And they get none of that back. And this is why we're trying to, so this is foremost, not about big business, small business, you know, who's making money, banking. It's all the lives like this that are being ruined yeah. because of a lie that marijuana's gonna make you crazy. I ain't crazy, I just hit the pen before we got going on. Okay, um, last couple of things, I'm just gonna read the titles and we're gonna be good. Okay. Um, uh, Massachusetts marijuana industry, mostly corporate of white inside Boston battle to change that. Another thing about social equity, but also talks about women, is a really good article, Massachusetts is leading the um, charge for social equity. Right. Uh, don't forget about uh, Massachusetts um, medical, geez, I'm trying to rush. Don't forget us, Massachusetts, Massachusetts medical marijuana patients say. So pretty much when there's recreational programs, a lot of people who are looking for a medical reason, look, don't just go straight, only record, zoned in on recreational, right. let's also talk about some medical. Right. Because there's different swing lanes. Yeah, and just like there's different, I mean, there's over-the-counter medicine and there's medicine you can buy off the shelf. 100%, 100%. Um, here's the average price for cannabis in each of the Canadian provinces. Just so you know, the prices did not fall out the woodworks. You can come out $6, but it's all good. All right, last thing, I almost had a record time on my news. I'm I was proud. sabotaged by Natalie right now by saying that I was going to finish this. This is okay. Um, here's how much marijuana business uh, t uh, are paying in taxes. There's billions of dollars in taxes being paid by businesses. 
um, which that money could be used in some a couple different ways. So, but right. read the article and follow that. Um, and that's that's pretty much. That's the nug news. I'm not nug news. I, feel like, I like it. Like, you know, that's kind of like no. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna go right into our main topic of how to make bubble hash. Yes, we're gonna get into how to make bubble hash. Um, which is getting into our concentrate series here, yes. uh, but also in our do-it-yourself series. Um, so, concentrate. I use the apple. I think I think you're good for analogy this time. You want to use the apple one? The apple one, yeah. So it's basically when you take the apple and you juice it out. The juice of it is the concentrate. Yes, and what that means in like a technical form, a form of a substance which has had the majority of its base components removed. Right. So the juice. Is, has been removed from the base component of the core and the skin and all that stuff. That's what's up. Um, and then we talked about the history of concentrates. Mm -hmm. um, it's been around for years, for, yeah. decades, over 10,000 years. It's not nothing new. Right. Um, it wasn't until the 1900s when there started to be marijuana prohibition um, that some of these forms of medicine or therapy became to be a little bit hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, you had the 1914 Harrison Act, which made drug use um, a crime. Uh, we had the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act, which banned the use of sales of cannabis um, and hemp. Um, and then in 1970, it was scheduled as a Schedule One drug. So from 1970, and then comes 2000, 2018. Right. Um, then there starts to be medical um, legalization and adult use legalization, which then opened up conversations mm -hmm. and opened up more access, even though it's still limited. Now conversations are kind of coming back full circle okay. about concentrates right. and that. Um, cool, and that what leads me to now, like why would people use bubble hash? Mm -hmm. And kind of the whole purpose of the show, we're talking about using cannabis in a therapeutic point of view. Um, so if you are looking to sleep, um, if you're looking to get relief, yep. uh, what about moods? You can um, do with different moods with the different types of cannabis. Yeah, so if you're looking, um, maybe you have anxiety, you want to just relax or calm down, mm -hmm. or uh, maybe feel sad, you kind of feel uplifted. Right. Um, so there's different kinds of cannabis that can help you in a therapeutic way achieve a certain mood and a certain effect mm -hmm. uh, for those who are suffering from different conditions um, or just have conditions or symptoms, whatever it is. Right. Um, so that's where bubble hash and that's where cannabis kind of comes into play. Cool? Cool. All right. Now, we're going to talk about actually how or what is bubble hash. So now when you're trying to consume bubble hash for cannabis therapy, um, I was, because cannabis, I mean, once you do decide, say, okay, I, I'm, I can't sleep. Right. Right. And I'm, I don't want to take pills. Um, you want to drink alcohol mm -hmm. um, or maybe you don't want to take some kind of pharmaceutical narcotic or some right. kind of opioid. You're looking for more of a natural solution. So then you start going, but it's just like, man, cannabis can get kind of complex. It can, there, and there's so many different types, like how do I consume it, what kind should I consume, what's best for me, what works for me. Yeah, and it's like once you get through the types, and then it's like, okay, so many different ways. Right. <laughs> and then it's yeah. so many different products. Um, so we're trying to help uh, you have a proper understanding about bubble hash. We're taking one product, one form, and we're going to talk about how to consume that product mm -hmm. um, so we can have a well-balanced understanding about bubble hash. Exactly. Uh, so what is bubble hash? Bubble hash is a concentrate made by getting dried and cured bud very cold yes it is and passing plant material through progressively smaller screens yes it is until all that's left are the trichomes so in other words in the way that i would explain that would be we're knocking off the damn trichomes with some cold ass ice yep. and then we're going to take that and put it through a screen and we're going to scrape that and that was that's some, your bubble hash that's bubble hash and we talked I like about that. We're talking about, there's three different trichomes, mm -hmm. um, but you're getting all those trichomes, and uh, that's what we're going to try to collect today. Cool. So, right now, we want to get into how to actually make it. Woohoo! You ready? How to make it, yeah. Ready for this? I'm ready. All right, so, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Cheers! I know, it's nice. Earl loves me, so he brought me a chair. That's what's up. So, uh, we talked about taking product, okay? I'm going to put my gloves on now. Woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. It does get a little sticky when you're dealing yes. with uh, cannabis and Oops, resin. Put it down the wrong way. It's okay. I do know how to put on gloves. It's okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you break it? I, it's okay. We're okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> She's strong armed. She's strong armed. Oh <laughs> well, as she figures out the gloves, <laughs> we're going to edit that out because we're, we're going to be able to repost it. It's all good. So this is actually, I took um, about a half pound of material and I put it inside this bag. 
So if you don't have a bag like this, um, you can put this inside of a t-shirt um, and pretty much you're gonna submerge this product inside of cold water. And I have a machine here that helped me do that. Um, otherwise, you could actually put this same material in a bucket and you're just gonna be agitating for 15, 20 minutes. Keep moving it, moving it, moving it. And what you're doing is with the ice and the water, you're just freezing those trichomes and they're gonna knock off the plant. Um, they're gonna knock off the leaf. Right. Um, and then once that happens, we're gonna scrape that up and that's how we're gonna get our bubble hash. So, I already pre-ran this machine for mm -hmm. about 15 minutes before we started because otherwise, you know, we- It's really loud. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a minute. So, we're gonna start with the pouring process and actually recovery process. So what I'm gonna do is try to save my iPad. And then, so what he has here are the different bags and he has the smallest filtered bag at the bottom and then he layers them up and we'll be pulling those out. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. So I have five different bags and these are called bubble bags. Um, this is from bubblebagdude.co. Bubble bag dude. I mean, what's the bubble bag dude? That's a pretty, pretty cool name. That is. Uh, but you can find these um, bags on Amazon. They're called bubble bags. It usually comes in fives, but you want to put the smallest. They come in numbers. Like this one says 220, one says 175, one says 73, one says 25. You want to go with the smallest one first and then the biggest one on top. Yep. And you're going to see why because as we're going to kind of take these off, that's what happens. So I'm going to take my water and I'm going to drain it. Boom. Oh, I was really, so he said he was going to do this earlier and he's like, oh, I'll just do it over here. And I thought he was honestly going to like pour that and I didn't know what was going to happen. But it isn't like way better. So if you can see just how dark that is, you think that's in a camera shot? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So this is clear water and all it was kind of uh, muddy, brown. Well, those are all those trichomes we're trying to recover. All in that water. And it'll get caught in the screen. All right, cool. It sounds like <laughs> it sounds like Coco. <Coco. laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> what a show. <laughs> All right, so all right, so the first one here. Thank you. Save the iPad. Cool. We're gonna take the first one. You see, it's kind of caught in that screen. Right. And we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it over the bucket. Just like this. Yeah. Perfect. And we're gonna spread it. Kind of give a little visual here. So, as you can see, it kind of caught some of the material. Mm -hmm. Now, the first bag is usually the bag that what we scrape up will be used for like edibles. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna do one, and then after this, we can kind of tag team. Yeah, we'll couple get a few ones. of them done. So the thing, I'm gonna use a spoon to kind of scrape it up. And another trick would be, say there's a lot on the edges here, I could take a cup of water and I can kind of. Oh, to get it all into the middle. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. That's a good idea. Through. So this is actually the first one caught a lot of leaf matter. It's all good because this is what we use in edibles. And as we keep going down the line, it's going to get better and better quality. So this is the first one. And, we, and I usually would do about two runs, two or three runs. Okay, of like so, the same material. Yeah, same process. So I'm going to take that bucket, put it over here. And Jim, I'll let you go ahead and uh, practice. You're going to practice? You, <laughs> yep. to, uh, uh. You, can, you can put it in there, okay. and then I'll pull it over. Let that drain a little bit. Cool. There you go. Take another one. And see if I can do it, anyone can do it. How to make bubble hatch. Going through here. And again, the reason why we have different screens is that the finer the screen, the finer the quality of the material is. So you'll see this one is a little thinner than the blue. And so you don't see as much of that plant material in it. So now what you're going to do is take a spoon and you're just going to scrape that up. 
And you're going to want to come all the way as you can. I know, you gave me the good one. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you that one. There you go. Thank you. There you go. You're going to scrape it all the way up. So as I scrape that, I'm just going to get a little closer to the camera so you can see. Now what we're putting this on too is I have, it's a cheesecloth and it's laying on top of parchment paper. I just do that because the parchment paper is not stick and the cheesecloth, because it's still wet, it's gonna allow it to actually dry out a little bit before we actually get to the final product. So as you can see, yeah. That right there, Instagram. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. We are live with Instagram still. That's what's up. <laughs> Instagram's a trooper. They're the best. That's like our most loyal fan base. And this is the first run. Usually, again, we do about two runs on this. So even if you don't get everything out of that screen, there's another run to come. All right. Okay, I'm gonna actually give you. <laughs> he gave bucket. me this to start with, and then uh, when he asked for a bucket, I used it as the first one. Yeah. Thank you. That teamwork. Got you. Boom. Here we go. Got a bucket. I'm gonna give this one to you. Scrape this last one. Then we're going to. Boom. Oh. Look at that. I'm gonna give it around a ring for you. The best. All you gotta do is just tug on it like a little t-shirt. I don't know what I would do without it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. One more, this is our final one. Actually, I get to use the existing bucket. I usually, I mean, I'm using more than one bucket because I was trying to help speed it up. But usually I can use the same bucket um, or just one bucket. But this one right here is the most finest. Probably look like I'm struggling doing this, but. Uh. <laughs> I know I'm struggling. Earl makes it look really easy. It's not the easiest, but I would say it's really not that hard. And what it is, is getting that bucket. There you go. There we go. Look yeah, at that. Look at that. That's a good one. Now, this is going to be the most finest one. Like you see, with this one, is still water. All up in there. And that's because it's taking a very long time for this to drain because it's so fine. But this is really, really, really top, fine quality smoke once you finish. So cool, I'm gonna let that one go. And then as that goes, look at you. Look at you. She's like she's making cereal over here. All right, cool. Good. Boom. I tried to keep it in order. It's all good. So, what we have right now for our bubble hash is that what I would normally take right here is I'll scoop this onto the parchment paper and then I'm gonna break it up. Okay. I'm gonna break it up because it helps it dry. Mm, that makes sense. Let me see this one right here. And this right here is actually nine pound hammer is the trim material that we use to make this bubble hash. Boom. So after that, what I would do is let this dry in a cool, dark place okay. um, for about 24 hours. And then after that, I will actually jar it up and then I will burp it, or what it call, you cure it. Okay. Uh, I'll cure it for another week where every day for about a half hour, I will open that jar Okay. Um, and let it dry out. So for 24 hours, you first let it dry out in a dark spot, um, and then you put that into like a mason jar, um, and then you open that mason jar about once a day for about okay. a half hour, and that's gonna just slowly release a lot of the moisture, okay. but still retain a lot of the terpenes, flavonoids, and cannabinoids. Cool. And that's bubble hash. That's bubble hash. That's pretty simple. That is pretty easy. I know you probably... <laughs> <She> <laughs> was like, that wasn't the worst, but I have to say like, so we made dry sift on last week's episode, and I don't know if you guys could tell, but I was like, I was crying. 
yeah. and then I took that home and I couldn't even finish making it because I was sneezing so much yeah. uh, from everything in the air but like I haven't sneezed and I actually feel good with this oh wow that's what's up so I think I would prefer making this even though it's a little bit more of a struggle and you need a little bit more you know materials for it yeah. um, I'm like alive and I'm not dying and, and what we use so this is called um, and check out the other episode which yeah. was um, Concentrates one on one, I believe it was. Yeah, episode um, seventeen. Yeah, uh, but we actually went into different 18. types of concentrates. Um, checked it out, um, but yeah, you should check out. Every just watch episode. all of them, but yeah, I'm, it was eighteen yeah, yeah, yeah. and then nineteen. Now, but this is what is called a non-solvent concentrate. Right. Meaning we're not using gases, not using butane, um, NO2, CO2, propane, nothing like that, or gas, any kind of gas. Just use water. Right. You use ice and water, and what we did was just freeze the trichomes, knock them off, and then strain that water through a filter which were the different bubble bags and we have three different kinds of grade a bubble hatch so i mean these are going to come out really really nice this stuff right here i just use for edibles um, but anything else yeah i wouldn't do there you go instagram yeah so this was the largest filter down to the smallest yeah you can see there's a lot of plant material even got in there. So I'll actually throw this back into the bucket. Okay. And just redo it. Because um, a lot of plant material got through that. But these are definitely going to be good. Cool. That's bubble hash. So we're going to talk about now much. some different ways to consume it. Yeah. Yeah. So once this dries up, how this typically would be. It would dry up in a way like this. So it's nice and chunky and, and, and hard. Um, you see some light pieces, you see some dark pieces because of different grades. Mm -hmm. What I do is I just mix them I up. I was going to ask, yeah, yeah, you just mix them all up. Uh, some people just mix them together and make it like a brick. Okay. Um, so you got this bubble hash puck. Um, but I like to keep it in small pieces. It's a little bit more easier to kind of deal with. Right. Yeah. So and like when you're ready to consume, you don't have to like break it up. Yeah. So, um, I mean, one, you can put stuff like this in edibles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're making brownies or... Um, so do you have to like activate it like you do normal? Do you have to decarb it? Good question. If you're going to actually use it for edibles, you need to decarb. Okay. Which is setting the oven at 240 degrees and putting it in the oven for 30 minutes. Yep. Um, and then what that does, it turns it from THC, um, A, to THC. So it actually activates right. the THC. Yep, so your so. body can actually consume it and uh, like, and, use it. And in this way, it's actually good for dosing too because you, you can measure you know, a gram of bubble hash it's a little bit more easier to dial in if I had, you know, an ounce of trim. Because mm -hmm. you don't really know how potent that trim is. Right. That trim, and you don't know how many trichomes are on there. It's just an ounce of trim is not always equal yeah. to all potency. All ounces are not the same. Right. Um, so with, with bubble hash, you can actually say, okay, I'm going to use a gram. So any kind of concentrate is easier to dial in yeah. and actually um, dose with it. Yeah. So, cool. Um, another way would be... Smoking. Smoking. The uh, joint or a bong or glass piece. That's how we're doing it today. We are Look how cute that. these are. We did. We have a little glass piece right here. Um, we're going to show you how to do the glass piece. So one of the reasons why I call it bubble hash is one. One of the reasons is when you put the flame over the bubble hash, it actually bubbles. Oh, that's cool. The other reason is because it's made with bubble bags. But another way. I'm just gonna do a little baby guy in mine. Yeah. Yours is huge. <laughs> he like picked up one like this big. Now, if you're gonna consume bubble hash just in a pipe, right? What you wanna do is only put the flame just above it. Oh. So you don't wanna put it actually on it. And I notice you're not like hitting it like you normally would. Uh huh. That's a good thing. To and I'm know. just letting it actually bubble. I wish you can kind of see. It bubbles like you gotta look at it just a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, camera, you can't see it too much. I know. But it bubbles. So then. Look at that. It's really smooth and clean. It's really smooth and clean. Do I have to relight it? Yeah. And you just inhale, right it, put it over it. You can see a little bubbles. It actually tastes really good. It tastes like, um, almost like cotton candy. Yeah, and it's like, there's no flavors. It's just whole plant. I mean, it's, right. It's just a plant. Nothing else has been added to it. Um, so yeah, it's one of the oldest forms of smoking. Um, and really for the bang for your buck, I mean, this is, this is usually potency between 40 to 50% okay. um, THC. 
So a little bit really goes a long way. Right. And you know, I took one hit, I'm good. I'm good. Like I wouldn't have to keep hitting it. And I yeah. still, we still got a whole bunch left. So this could last, you know, a whole day, um, a whole football game, uh, <laughs> or whatever it is. So, so that's cool. Um, now, if you do use a pipe, though, I would recommend. So some of the pipes have holes at the bottom and on the side. Right. You want to have a hole on the side of that pipe, so, it's so like it the doesn't choke. fall. Yeah. So it doesn't actually fall through the middle. Now this one has a hole also in the middle, straight down. Okay. Yeah. But it does. some of them, the holes are actually on the side. Oh. So the concentrate doesn't fall into the pipe and you don't, you know, suck up the concentrate. You don't get pooped on. Yeah, yeah, when you're trying to actually inhale. <laughs> nice. Or you can use a screen. Yes, you can use the screen and just forget <laughs> everything I just said and just use the screen. Okay. You can buy screens on Amazon for like a hundred of them for like 30 cents. That's what's up, what's up. And I, I like the idea too about the, uh, I never tried, uh, I did, so I will make a, a caviar blind and I will add the bubble hash in between. But kind of like how you mentioned you did Keith. Mm-hmm. It's just full Keith. <laughs> <laughs> She's hardcore. She's hardcore. I love my Keith blinds. <laughs> uh, the other thing would be uh, <laughs> press it into a hard puck um, and you can... Play I'm, hockey with it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you press it into a hard puck. I don't know. What are you going to do with it? You going to chew on it? You could de decarb a big chunk. I mean, I can use self to break it chew, off, though. Still I guess like maybe you could, like, hold it in a puck yeah. and, like, light it and just yeah. no piece it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. She's at her therapeutic sweet spot right now. Um, I know. I sat down. I was tired of standing. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right. So questions and answers. Um, do, uh, I don't know if we we'll even have any questions and answers. Instagram, maybe. Let Instagram? Instagram. There we go. We're checking Instagram. <laughs> question and answer. We're making bubble hash here. Come on. Questions and answers. No question, but I did have a question that I wrote cool. down. Cool. Okay. Um, if I can get into this. Okay. So at the end of the day, we know what making dry sift and bubble hash, the, the process of making it is different, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, are they basically the same? Yes. Like it's just, it looks kind of different, but essentially they are. It, like if you took them to a lab and got them tested, would they be able to tell like that's bubble hash, that's dry sift? Ooh, I think you could. I think you could. Okay. Uh, the outcome, the texture of bubble hash right. is different, it's than, way different than sift. Now you can take sift and put it into a puck. You can take bubble hash and put it into a puck and you will be able to identify which one is Because I was going to say like puck. this is, like you could tell the difference in colors and I felt yeah. like with the dry sift, once you mix it all together, it was one color. Yeah. And like you could still see the differences. Yeah, I, I think with, because once this dries up, I mean, we broke this up, but with the, with the key and the dry sift, it's loose. Right. Um, with this, if we did not break that up, it was just going to dry up as a hard ball. Okay. So it's more solid. Okay. So it's more naturally in, as a solid substance, a solid concentrate. So, uh, but as far as purity wise, right. both of them are non solvent ways of making mm -hmm. a concentrate, meaning you don't really need any kind of gases. It's just, Which I like. I feel like yeah. it's more natural. Yeah, and it's clean. Mm -hmm. It's very clean and it's, I mean, who needs a hundred thousand dollar fancy machine? Um, if you're trying to achieve to get some sleep or you're looking to dose uh, for being calm or you find that one kind that you do like and they maybe have trim of that kind. Right. Ask for that trim. It's a lot cheaper and you could take that and make a concentrate out of it. Mm -hmm. And you can make a keef out of it. You can make a bubble hatch out right. of it. And then it's, it's well, some of the best smoker you're ever going to have. I really like it. Cool. Mm -hmm. That was good. Token takeaways. Token takeaways. Yeah. My joke token is that Earl loves me enough to bring me a chair. Yes. So thank you, the team at G3, for allowing me to sit today. And my token takeaway <laughs> is that uh, I just had a token for the takeaway. <laughs> I just wanted to take a token. I just took a token for the takeaway. That's all I wanted to do. That's my token. I like that. But uh, yeah, it's just so clean and smooth. So this is an iPhone hammer. Man, I'm gonna bring this for the next episode to see okay. how it dries up. Yeah, that'll be so perfect. I can show it. And, and next we week we'll going. be here again, um, probably more live. <laughs> We're gonna try to, you know, it's our hotspot thing. We're gonna see if it's uh, we'll figure able it out. To, to pick it up. If yep. not, we're gonna have to call Comcast who has a monopoly on damn internet yeah. uh, and see what happens. <laughs> just joke. Uh, don't assume he's Comcast. All right, um, let's it, do some things. Say some thanks, and also please check out our resources. Uh, resources, we, please, yes. We have the whole how to make bubble hash uh, template um, that's on CannabisTherapyNetwork.org. That's CannabisTherapyNetwork.org. 
Uh, I, I just feel good. like it was like a commercial. So. Good. Um, so go there, uh, go to resource page and how to make bubble hash. We laid it out step by step uh, by Tamara. Thank you, Tamara, and leading off the thank yous. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, you're awesome. Thank you, Earl, for letting us come into it, your place today and do uh -huh. this episode. It was, it's it's nice. It's hard to do this kind of stuff in the, in our office because we don't have these kind of stuff together. So thank you for letting us come today. Thank you, Jared, for joining us and helping us set up. Thank you, Natalie, for being very helpful and always being our director. Thank you, Christina, for posting the articles. Thank you, Mike, for being short and stout. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Brian, and thank you, Leo, because you guys are awesome. And, you know, man, thank God. <laughs> it sounds to you when she does it. It just sounds like when I was a kid, my dad used to teach us to say my prayers. You just, you better, you better thank grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. That was great. Uh, thank you, Jen, for being such a great co-host. And thank you, Facebook. Thank you, Instagram, uh, for sticking with us. Uh, we try to go live again next Thursday on yep. how to make a cooking oil. Or we may do how to make uh, Green Dragon alcohol with cannabis. You let us know. Uh, message us on Facebook uh, which topic you like better. Um, and subscribe, share us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next Thursday. We'll see you guys later. Cool.